Hi, welcome to Arizona Highland Homesteading. Today we are doing a May 2022 garden tour. All right, here we go. May and uh, man the blackberries are just gigantic here got some big ones there's scout nosing around what do you find scout looking at the potatoes huh him and Kay have been catching some mice lately and that's been great so we appreciate that and, and a few pack rats so those are our blackberries they're they're going well Daniel took one that was out in the path here took it out. Now these are our paths. If you haven't checked out our video about how to use these landscape timbers right here, go check that video out. I'll try to remember to put a link up in the right corner there, but uh, they're pretty simple, pretty easy. And then we just put down decomposed granite in the middle. We need to kind of refresh it from time to time. We've got some of our pollinator plants over here as well as some blueberries. Let's take you over here. Let's check out these blueberries. They're still growing. They're looking good. Man, we got quite a few on this bush. We got this one in a pot because we're planning to take it with us. Um, but it's been doing good. So these are called Badleas or butterfly bush. And uh, they're doing great. Uh, we also have some poppies here. These are mostly for our pollinators there. And we got wisteria that's in a pot back in there. That's the wisteria leaf there. Those ones. Uh, these are actually oats. We planted those as cover crops, so you'll see cover crops mixed in here. This is a hot lips. You can kind of get see why it has that name. It's got red lips on the kind of white flower. But uh, this is uh, looks like wheat, but I believe it's actually triticale. So that's a cover crop as well. And we're just letting most of this stuff go to seed. We've harvested some of it to kind of keep it for later, but. Here's a blueberry in a, in a bucket here. These blueberries are pretty small still. I don't know, it's a little bit different variety. But we got this uh, drip hose going into here. I just saw Gathered Together Homestead just did a video on drip lines and emitters and whatnot. But uh, we've got emitters that look like that. 
can see the emitter and then it's just got a piece of hose and so this one is watering our smoke tree and that's the smoke tree there it's just a beautiful uh, landscape bush really and then we got some this is some of our other cover crop this is uh, some type of clover I think it's a I think it might be crimson clover I don't remember what the blooms look like on that one Scott saying hello to the dog next door sorry for the extra noise um, oh and then all of these that have died, these are actually um, peas. You can see these ones are just hanging on, but it's been hot lately. And that one likes the cold a lot more than it likes the hot. So I need to come in here probably today, clean all that stuff out of there. It looks looks kind of trashy. So we like to keep it kind of cleaned up around here. Um, but we got a lot of stuff growing. These are uh, raspberries in here. I don't know what variety. Let's see if we can see any kind of they're green on there do you see them look at those green raspberries those should be ripe here sometime soon we're excited they're still putting out more blooms but uh it's great we got poppies intermixed in here you know and we got uh these volunteers watch out if you plant some of these berry vines because they'll just pop out everywhere and then it's kind of nice we've um, actually transplanted a few of them and uh, they're they're going good some of them lived and some of them didn't so uh, I don't know what this one's called but this is an awesome plant it's got some purple flowers so it's good for our pollinators we like to bring in those pollinators to our garden um, and all these poppies really help with that look at that pretty one that one got kind of scorched by the sun but it's so pretty uh, got a bunch more coming out. Look at that. I love these flowers. You guys, this is one of my favorite times of the year when everything's going. This is a Russian sage, I think. No, it's not. <laughs> it's got some other type of flower. I don't know what that one is. That one might be chamomile or feverfew. Might be feverfew. I don't know. Oh, check this one out. There's another cover crop, but it's got a cool flower. That is not the best flower. But that is vetch. See those flowers? Isn't that cool? So that one is a nitrogen fixer. So it, um, it has a symbiotic relationship with uh, some fungus in the soil. And uh, the fungus gets the, uh, I think it's fungus, maybe it's a bacteria. It's early, sorry, early in the morning. But um, anyway, those vetch here's some more look at this so this is the vetch and it's I think it's called a hairy vetch but look at it it's got like pea pods on it that's one way to tell a legume from uh, other plants is that they have these pods so and that uh, means that they fix nitrogen as well so there's more nitrogen in the air than there is in the soil so that's why we like to plant these cover crops and this is um, oats and vetch together so if you can see that so this is a really good um, idea to plant them together, which uh, we just planted a mix of different cover crop seeds all um, intermixed. And what happens is that these vetch, of course, uh, fix the nitrogen out of the air, and then the oats uh, grab them with their roots and they can kind of send it down farther into the soil. And um, that's why these oats are looking so good. You know, they, um, they're getting nitrogen from the vetch. So, and look at this triticale, man, is it strong. But yeah, it looks like wheat. And we do have some wheat around here from um, straw bales that we've um, kind of broken up and spread throughout the, uh, the yard. Um, mostly for erosion control. But uh, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome to grow um, our own cover crop seeds. So we'll be harvesting some of those and spraying them around. But look at that blowing in the wind. Oh man, it's so beautiful. Today's gonna be an awesome day. As long as the dogs don't bark too much. Uh, so we've got all of these sunflowers. Look at all these sunflowers growing. We've got this, this one's got a head on it. It's not quite ready yet to come out, but it will be soon. Maybe in June we'll have uh, some sunflowers to show you. Who knows, I know July is awesome, but man, look at this. This one's also in a pot. 
But this is a blueberry plant. Look at all these blueberries. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so great. Blueberries are one of my favorite berries. I love them so much. Some of them got hit hard with frost and and some of the heat. But th this one's in the shade and I think it really likes it. It's in the shade of these sunflowers. See? Alright, this is a calendula here. Look at that. Yeah. Look at them flowers. I love them. I love these flowers. Bringing in our pollinators and they're pretty. All right, let's get to the garden, huh? We gotta do a garden update. All right, so we got these onions in here and then these are actually beets, I found out. Uh, and so we got some over there. Got some real little guys right there. Got quite a few in this little row here. And then these are mostly all onions in here. We got some snap peas growing along the back of um, this trellis here on, this, on the wall of the garden. We've got a couple sunflowers in here. You'll see sunflowers just kind of volunteered themselves in many places. We did plant some on purpose, but uh, these are not uh, onions right here. You can see these are thinner leaves. If you ever wondered what the difference was between onions and garlic, onions are more of a round leaf. And then the garlics are more of this flat leaf and they have a defined vein. So uh, those are garlic. Those should be those should be pretty awesome. Um, we're real excited about the garlic. We use lots of garlic and onions over here. But uh, you can see these peas are growing there. We got some flowers, have some pods there. Here's the uh, celery. Let's see, we're getting some celery stalks, um, but not a whole lot out of that one. But this one, look at this one over here. Yeah, that one's growing. We're probably gonna bolt soon, I reckon. But we'll see. So, anyway, this is our uh, our eastmost pathway, and then this is all garlic in here too. These ones. Aren't looking quite as strong, to be honest. Um, this one's kind of coming up. We've had some, we've had some pests in here, but uh, yeah, there's some garlic. Those look like they're kind of reddish garlics. But uh, I don't know how much longer those ones will go. Um, then we got some onions in the back there, and there's some dill. Got a little, little fly or something in there. I don't know what that is. Looks like it just came out. I don't know if you guys can see that too well, but there's the dill. And then uh, we got some squash coming up here. Look at that. The mice have really eaten our squash seeds a whole bunch, so we'll see what happens there. And you can see that something's been munching on these. I think those are beans. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure again. Um, I need to get the tour from Danielle before I give the tour to you guys. You can see some cover crops growing in our pathways. Uh, since we're no-till growers here, um, we like to leave stuff and have somewhat of a living pathway, but we don't want them to suck out too much of the water because water is um, life here in Arizona. It is so dry. That's why you can see all these these little emitters we got drip stuff everywhere but um yeah there's some more squash coming up i don't know if those are are zucchini or if they are um summer squashes or if they are pumpkins but uh look at this these are some carrots i know that some carrots we got growing in here we got quite a few carrots growing in different places that looks like a bean to me uh, so I think we got a few beans here. Danielle said that she had done the three sisters thing. So uh, maybe we'll see some squash and uh, some beans and some corn. Those are the three sisters. Uh, usually you do them in a mound. Look at that. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting mushrooms in here in Arizona. So that's interesting. Usually aren't growing mushrooms. But every once in a while we'll get something that's a little bit some spot that's a little bit wetter and then look at this forest of potatoes got all these potatoes growing so you can kind of tell which ones are which because of the veining so this one's got more of a purplish veining on the leaves so those should be purple potatoes whereas like these ones over here let's see 
just green, no real purple on the veining. So uh, this one's flowering. That's cool. Um, so this one's probably like a Yukon Gold or something like that, more of a, a yellow potato rather than a purple potato. But look at all this, look at all this stuff in here. We got tons, tons of potatoes, and I believe this is a, a volunteer pumpkin. We got flower back in there. I can barely get in there with the camera for you guys, but we just have a forest. Oh, there's a, there's a potato flower. Look at that. That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, you can see these these are our mouse traps that we uh, have had the most success with. We've had other mouse traps, but these live traps are are pretty good. And then we put alfalfa pellets in there. You see that alfalfa pellet? Can't focus on it too well. There you go. But uh, <clears throat> again, these are the rows here, and we have this uh, these wood chips which are largely our own wood chips that we've made from our chipper shredder. I don't think that we've brought in too many other wood chips uh, from other places, but our pathways are about 12 inches wide, and then our rows on average are about 30 inches wide, and we just keep adding compost to the top. And we have found that that has made our garden way way more productive than when we used to till it up and dig everything up and um, make it look all fluffy seems like just keeping all of the all the stuff under the surface is the way to go so if I dig under here I might be able to see it's it's moist down here and there's so much life and we don't do this very often unless we're putting in starts but um, but the, the rest of the compost is almost like a mulch on top for the first uh, couple of inches or so. And then it's nice and moist down below. Here's some onions that we started from seed. Um, and we've got a bunch of different types, uh, but they're, they're still pretty small. So hopefully these guys will, will take off. Um, but isn't that cool? These may be chives. I don't know, sometimes they sell them as chives, but uh, I guess that's like a small onion. Uh, they'll grow up. Um, we got some, some. Uh, I think these are watermelons. Could be wrong. Those might just be some other type of squash. Again, I need to have Daniel give you guys the tour, but you get me. Look at all that corn. So we planted quite a bit of corn in here, and uh, like I said, there's some three sisters action going on here. So look at there's there's a squash right in there, in this uh, in this grass cover crop that we have in here. So I gotta come in through here and and cut some of that down. But uh, we got look at that got a squash coming up right there. Look at that. There we go. So uh, three sisters, like I said, um, corn, beans, and squash. So we should have some squash and some beans coming up in here. But these are the corn. Corn are just taking off now. They just got started, I think, a week or two ago. There's another. Uh, that one might be a bean right there. But there's a squash. Look at this lettuce. Oh, I love this type of lettuce. I forget what it's called. But this is our Highland Homestead uh, lettuce. Look at that. Daniel marked it HH lettuce. So this is stuff that we let go to seed last year. And this is seed from that, that stuff that we harvested last year. Let's take a bite. Mmm. That's great lettuce. Super good. Um, Alright, we got some... Uh, what is this? Broccoli. Calabrese broccoli? Does that sound right? Um, I don't know all the different types of fancy stuff that Daniel planted this year. These are beets. So we got quite a few beets. We love beets. We love growing salad stuff in general. And then look at this. You guys might have seen these peas in uh, April, but look at this for May. Oh my goodness, they're growing up this arbor. Oh, they're big. They're getting super big, so we've been putting them on, 
on this arbor trellis for them just like that and then they can keep growing up Danielle's been putting them on here every day actually this one's looking a little bit wilty Need some water we need to water today it's Saturday so boys are sleeping in a little bit Danielle's up but uh, she'll be in the garden right after I get this camera out of here she don't like a camera in her garden while she's in here so more beets more beets a little lettuce there uh, all these peas so this is the the second pathway here and the second row so I already showed you that so let's look at the third so we got a whole mess of salad greens in here this is that big old spinach I don't know what that thing's called I forget oh here's a tag look it's the giant Norfolk spinach so look how big these things are they're gigantic like as big as my hand leaves as big as my hand let's taste one of these little guys don't tell Danielle hmm that's good I'll put this little red lettuce in here mmm let's try that one mmm that one's really good it's super thin super tender that's good we got carrot back in here this is uh, purple mustard let's try one of these little leaves here mmm yeah that's spicy mmm that's good we've got some carrots growing in there there's the peas on this side. Look at them go. Oh my goodness. They're so much bigger than they were in April, aren't they? Look at We got peas. Oh, I'm tempted to eat those right now. But Danielle, she would not be happy. <laughs> she would notice that those are gone. She just told me, hey, there's peas out there. Make sure you get the peas on camera. So we got more squash in here. Look at all them. I don't know, we haven't marked the squash. It's funny because um, some of these tomatoes and varieties of different things she, she marks, but some of the other stuff, you know, we can just tell, like the Bible says, right? You can tell a tree by the fruit it produces. So, same with the squash, I guess. All right, so here's the new cattle panel we were telling you guys about. And here are all of the straw, <laughs> Not strawberries, tomato plants that we've got going on. And they're all different varieties, so it'd take me a long time to tell you guys about all of them. But I'll show you them as we have the fruit coming out on them. I can still walk across this pathway here. Then we've got some sunflowers growing, and all these onions are looking so good and so big. We come down here, we got our cabbages. We got some peas growing. We got some kale over there. So the kale, different types of kale. We got all of these peas growing good, like the other ones are on the arbor. And then we got our garlic down here. They're looking good, aren't they? Excited about that. The last row over here. Look at that mouse hole. We need to get that guy. All right. So we've got the red romaine. We got the red mustard. Sorry, it's starting to get windy out here, folks. Sorry if the audio is bad. Uh, we got a cool pollinator there. It looks like a little fly or something. All kinds of cool little pollinators coming in. Everybody thinks about the honeybees when they think about pollinators, but these little guys are the ones that are most common. And there is a different type of bee right there. I don't know if you can see it. It is like a carnivorous bee, I think. I think it's trying to eat these other pollinators, maybe. I don't know. But uh, we got some more peas here. Um, I forgot to show you guys. We got these yellow peas right here. Yellow snap peas. Look at that. It's pretty cool. They're a little bit different. I think I showed you the small ones when, before they had peas on them uh, in April. But see, there's a green pea there. And then you can see these flowers are even kind of yellow on this one. But there's the yellow pea. Isn't that cool? You guys see that? Yellow pea, nice. So, that sounds kind of weird, yellow pea. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is our uh, some small type of broccoli. 
Look at that little fly. Isn't that cool? All kinds of little pollinators. Then we got Serrano here. This is a Serrano, a little flower on it. Got cabbage moth. Watch out, cabbage moth. Get out of here, cabbage moth. <laughs> we don't, don't need you. This is the chard that we've had growing uh, all winter long. And it's going to seed, which we'll get seed from it. But look at that stalk. That's what it's coming off of. Look at that big old woody stalk. That's a stump. Isn't that crazy? So <clears throat> we didn't intend for that to keep growing. We just cut it off at ground level and it kept growing. So <clears throat> another benefit of the no-till method. Never know when stuff is going to come back. Here's a bunch of carrots. I wonder what they look like down there. Oh, they're not ready yet. Leave them alone, Nick. All right, we got some more Serranos. Daniel picked these uh, uh, up down in um, Phoenix, and they're already growing. Look, I already got pepper, and it's only May. That's just amazing for our area. Uh, in Phoenix, that's no big deal, but up here, it sure is. Got more, more and more carrots. Look at them all. Nice. Love the carrots. We got some more peppers over here. So this one is an early jalapeno. Both of these are. And then look at what we got. Little figaga, figa, finger, little finger egg, eggplant. <clears throat> so the little finger eggplant. We got mint that's coming up. We tried to get rid of it, but it's coming back. We actually have mint starts that we're gonna probably sell off. We got a whole bunch of them. Those ones I took out of the path, if you saw that video. We got Anaheim pepper right here, excuse me. Then we got a bell pepper and another small bell pepper right there on that emitter. And another one over here. Look at that, love the peppers. More eggplant too. We got three of the eggplants there, and then there's all of the onions, and uh, we also have this kale that's going to seed. So we'll get all these seed pods off of here. Uh, but that's great. Oh man, we got aphid infestation. Look at all that. We gotta hit those with some soap. Soapy water. That'll do it. And I think that's a pumpkin in there, and a tomato. I think those are volunteers, but uh, sometimes Danielle puts some in there um, before the onions are done so that we have something else that kind of has their roots going already. Um, it kind of holds on to the structure of the soil. So that's kind of a good idea, we think. You might not think so, but we do. So uh, we got that there, the, the sunflowers are growing there. We got uh, another squash down in there. You can see that. And this little sprayer is, is pretty good, but now it's getting blocked. You guys see that little sprayer over there? So that's pretty much it. Um, we got one, one more row here to show you. And this is our cilantro that's going to seed. So we're going to get some coriander. Look at all these cool little bees here. Lots of different pollinators here. The predator bee looking to eat some other insects. It's pretty cool. It's like a whole uh, whole ecosystem on top of these flowers here. Um, well that's that. We got some um, some different types of lettuce, uh, and then these are some some squash and what is this? Oh, wasabi arugula. Let's taste this wasabi arugula. Can you guys hear the chickens? They're fighting. They're still figuring out the pecking order since we put in those new ones. All right, I got some wasabi arugula to try. Oh my goodness. It tastes exactly like wasabi. I am not joking. It's spicy like wasabi too. It tastes almost identical to wasabi. That is so good. Oh my goodness, and we're going to have some seed from it. I can't wait. I love that. We've got some more carrots back in here. We've got some onions there. More carrots, some more butterleaf lettuce there. Oh man, I gotta sneak some more of this uh, arugula. It's so good. Look at that. It is totally, 
Chipotle wasabi, 100%. It's spicy like wasabi. That is so good. Oh, that's my favorite thing we're growing this year, <laughs> by far. It just has such a good flavor. Um, all right, we've got some more uh, mustard greens over here. This lettuce, I picked this on, um, I think it was Outdoors with Big Matt on his live stream. I picked some of this for our burgers. We had on our burgers, that's really good lettuce too. I think that this is, oh, look at that little grasshopper. He's gonna be eating some some holes in here. Already did, I can get you. Oh, oh, he's hopping. Oh, I got him. I'm gonna feed him the chickens now. All right, well, that is our garden for May of 2022, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tour. I know it's a long one. Appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. And if you made it this far, man, you're, you're amazing. So thank you so much. Let me know if you made it to the end and saw the little grasshopper that I caught for the chickens. <laughs> Type in there, uh, I saw that little grasshopper and I'll know you watched to the end. But um, got some sunflowers in the block wall here as well. Uh, but yeah, that's the garden guys. For June, it's gonna look even way more different, I'm sure. But uh, the peas are probably gonna be all the way up that arbor trellis and the tomatoes will probably be growing up on that that new cattle panel. And, uh, yeah, it's so amazing. We'll probably be harvesting onions and garlic before then. Maybe even those potatoes way at the end. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave that comment about the little grasshopper. All right, well, that is our May of 2022 garden tour of our garden in the highlands of Arizona where the cactus meets the pines. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We hope you like our tour of the garden. We're gonna be doing a tour every month in uh, the growing season. So we should have one coming up for June, July, August, September, and October, maybe even November. We'll see how long our growing season goes. Again, my name is Nick from Arizona Highland Homestead. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll have some more videos for you real soon.